play an old Tessa watch uh, thing that's already okay. up there. It, it says that we're live now. So we will hopefully check this out. Uh, thanks for joining us today for our monthly Legacy Virtual Users Group Community Hangout on Air. I'm Tessa Keo, and with me today in the room are uh, Carol Stevens, Linda McCauley, and Julie Goucher. We were hoping to have Shannon Thomas and also Jennifer Shore, who is the one who wrote the uh, blog post that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but I know both of them had unexpected visitors, and so maybe they'll be able to join us. We'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. Um, but hopefully you had an opportunity to read Jennifer Shore's post. Uh, I put it in the community and it's going to serve as the basis for our discussion and kind of dream trips today. But first we're going to cover just a couple of housekeeping issues because we took the long summer off and so we're kind of back at it for the first time in a while. So with a bit of housekeeping, the first item is we now have 729 members in our Legacy Virtual Users Group community. So welcome to all the new members and thanks for being part of our group to all of the longtime members who've been with us and it's almost uh, running up on two years. If you haven't introduced yourself in the community, please take a few minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself and be sure to select an avatar for your Google Plus account. Uh, blue heads are those people with no information and they're not likely to get invited into one of our Hangouts because we're responsible for the broadcast and so I don't let strangers into my home and I feel the same way about our Hangouts. So whether whether you use legacy or not, whether you just want to learn a little bit more about genealogy, family history, databases, complementary programs, our legacy group is open to everyone. But we would like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. I just kind of view that as being neighborly. And if you're new to Google+, or it's been a while, a couple quick reminders. You go to the left-hand side and hover over your home bar, and you'll have a list of choices. And that includes profile. And you're probably wondering how to get a nice background shot like I have, or an avatar. And that avatar is your circle shot, basically. And if you are not familiar with how to do it, um, we're just going to quickly go through that. You go to the profile and it allows you to put together basically what's your online calling card. You can add as much or as little information as you want and you can always update your information. There's an about section and that's shown here with all kinds of what I call tiles or cards and that includes basic information, work, education, um, you can uh, put on your contact information if you want, the communities that you're on in Google+, some of them, all of them, none of them, um, any links you have. So if you have a YouTube channel or you have a blog or you have a website, go ahead and add that kind of information. And then the best part that I like is the and your story. And so go ahead and what I would say is toot your own horn. Show us a little bit of your creative or funny side. Um, a lot of these are real interesting to read. A lot of people put in the surnames they're researching or the areas. Anything that, that will help other people find you is good. The blue links <coughs> excuse me, are um, always available there, the edit links for you to go into each of those tiles and put information in. And then any of the links that are there um, will take you to whatever section you're looking for. Now, while we're in the profile, you hover your mouse over the blue head or that current avatar. And once that little camera icon it, and add or edit an image to use as your avatar. So whether it's a childhood photo like I use, a current photo, uh, a portrait drawn for you by a child or grandchild, and I think that's what Jill Ball uses, uh, your prize roses or any other um, you know flowers that you use, and that's what Carol um, Stevens does. Any kind of fun image you want to come up with, go ahead and do something, but just don't leave it as a blue head because that that really it's hard to connect the person, the name with the face, and to work with it. 
And while you're there, also take a quick look at the sections that I have shown there boxed. They are about, and that's where you write about yourself. Any of your posts are going to be in there under posts. Your photos will be there. Your YouTube channel with any kind of videos. Anything that you've one plused if you want to share it. And reviews. So there's a lot in there in your profile that others will see and that you can see just depending on how you look at it. So go ahead and work with that when you get a chance. And now that we've taken care of the profile, another one of the areas um, to look at is communities. And I certainly hope you know how to find your way to the Legacy Virtual Users Group community. But you can also look up other communities and join them as well. And just a few quick reminders here. You can choose any of the topics for your post. And we would love to have more interaction. And that's basically conversations, suggestions, tips, questions. Anything you want to share can be in a post. And that's with any any other members that are in the community and, and posted to all of us. Now you can post to the community, you can post to a circle, and you can post publicly. You can also reshare posts that are in our community. If you think you know you found something that's great or somebody's given you a really good tip and you want to share it, um, definitely go ahead and do that interaction that's back and forth. So if you have a question or you wonder how to do something in Legacy, I would suggest at the outset that you check the help system. And you all knew I was going to say that because I say it in every Tuesday's tip. Um, but also don't waste a lot of time and don't get frustrated. Um, it's always easier and enough people are online to just go ahead if you've already checked it out and ask the question in the Legacy Users Group community. Um, Feel free to ask that question. Just put it in a post. Sometimes a picture is going to be worth a thousand words. So if, if you want to show your screen, take a screen capture of it and include it as an image. And then we can all kind of figure out what you're talking about. Um, be sure to let us know which version of Legacy you're using, because sometimes that can affect things, as well as if you're using the standard version or the deluxe version. Because I've seen a lot of times we tend to give some advice, and then the person is using the standard version, so they don't even have that feature. Um, but just if you tell us those two things, the answers will probably be quicker and more on point. And I would also say that somebody is always in the community, you know, whether they're reading something or they're checking things out. And so you can usually get a pretty quick assist from people. And I found that people in the community um, have a lot of clever ideas how to do something. And there might be five or six different ways. And you'll get all of those choices to work with. So if you have any suggestions, any tips or tricks that you've found especially helpful, why not be a good citizen in our community and share? And like I said, that could be a post, it could be an image, you could do a short video. Maybe you have a suggestion for a topic or a hangout or even a tutorial. Shannon Thomas did that with us and that's how we talked about Evernote. So go ahead and post. Um, you could send it um, directly to the community. You could also do a private message to Carol, Linda or me and that would work just fine. And when you post, if you if you can figure it out, and, and it's pretty easy, um, select the topic that you want your post to appear in. But if you're not sure, don't worry about it, because we can always reassign it. Um, but definitely take a look at, usually the ones that come up are, how do I do that, or trips, or tips and tricks. And as I said at the outset, if you haven't introduced yourself, go ahead and use the getting to know you um, topic. and. Uh, you know, then we can see them all by topics. The other thing is, if you've found something and you remember what it was about, but you don't know where you should be looking for it or you don't know the date, remember that Google has in each of the communities a search feature. So you could put in if it was keyboard shortcuts or if it was um, something JL Beacon had, had written. You can search the community and you can do that in all of the Google communities. So take advantage of that. And in my Google stream, and this is where I usually leave my stream, I leave it wide open so everything's in there, that little section that reads all. You could also limit it. If I was just interested in, in the legacy virtual users group circle, I could limit my stream to that and go through everything. But I leave my stream open, get all my posts. Um, but this is one of those places where you can see upcoming events if you've said yes or maybe. And so that's one place to find our Hangout is right in the stream. 
and you can check your events and that's you know where we looked for profile is also where community shows up and where events show up so you can look at your current events your future ones as well as the past ones that you might have attended and then when I click on the event from wherever I choose to get it from you know that hangout will appear with the details and you see that over on the right hand side as well as if you say yes or maybe that shows up as well and so we kind of know to expect you and we make sure to invite you um, and so this is one place where you can leave comments before during and after the hangout and finally, how do you know when we start? Hopefully, if this all worked right, um, we do our level best to start on time, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time, and, and then all of the other times Google should figure it out for your own computer's time. Uh, Google will let you know when we plan to start, and when you click on that arrow that's there, it gives you that countdown. When we start the broadcast, uh, I click click on live and then Google starts the broadcast and so you should be able to see the show right there so whether you're watching live or you're um, you know you're you're joining us later you, um, you are watching us you don't want to join and be in the room you want to watch what we're doing uh, you can do that or you can watch it when it's recorded uh, so there's a number of ways to hang out with us we would love it if you would join us in the room and we send out that invitation usually about five minutes before we go live now I just quick reminder as a kind of summary of all this uh, your assignments in the next month if some of our newer members can do this are to check out your profile and update it as necessary and I'd love to see some fun avatars and then check out our community and if you haven't introduced yourself do that if you've introduced yourself and you've been kind of silent if you either have a suggestion or a question why don't you join in and now that the housekeeping's done We get to do the fun stuff. <laughs> I saw this post by Jennifer Shore at the Scrappy Genealogist, and at the end, and then she posted that at the end of September, and I loved the concept. So I suggested that this is what we focus on in our Legacy Hangout this month, and I'll talk about what we'd do if we had a genealogy sabbatical year. And there were only a few rules, and I absolutely loved them, and they were that you had enough money to support yourself so no money worries folks and that you had no regular life responsibilities so somebody else was going to take care of everything you weren't going to get any calls from your kids or your parents or whatever uh, you didn't have to feed the dogs um, and you didn't have to worry about doing all the laundry as you traveled from one place to the next place everything was going to be there right for you um, so those were basically the rules and also that there was nothing that would distract you from doing your family history immersion research so I love this idea of the game uh, it's almost as good as when I go buy a lottery ticket and then think about how I'd spend it right now that's never happened for me unfortunately <laughs> but I can keep hoping and it's cheap entertainment so those are the rules and what I was going to do is just leave this up for you which is we can have this discussion you know talk about by month by person by the place you're going to what are you looking for where would you start where would you go next and why and I think right now if I have this right we have Jennifer in the room and so I'm going to introduce Jennifer so she could talk about what she did a little bit first and then we will move on to the other people that are here with us today. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. All right. So, Jennifer, you're up. <laughs> I have just run back home from a... Are you hearing feedback? No, I'm not. Okay, good. I just Thanks. ran home from taking my son to the doctor, so I'm a little frazzled at the moment. Um, but I was sitting home one day thinking about all the things I would love to be able to do if I had time and wasn't running my son to the doctor or cooking meals or doing all the other myriad things that we have to do. And I started dreaming about where I would go if I could to track down my ancestors. And, you know, of course, you immediately go to overseas. So I'm in America, so I immediately think, ooh, Ireland. England, Scotland, Germany, 
But then I started thinking about it and thinking, well, first I have to think about all the documents I haven't yet tracked down in America, and there still are many. I live in New England, and it isn't that big, but there isn't enough time in the day. People ask me all the time, have you done, have you finished that genealogy of yours yet? And I know you guys have probably gotten the question too, and I, I look at them like they have six heads. It's never going to be done ever. There's always something else to find. And so then I started thinking, okay, well, Massachusetts is closest. I, I, I'll go to Massachusetts first and track down this family, and then, oh, I have to go to Connecticut and track down all of these families. And I just let my mind have free reign, and I spent a year traveling. And I hear you're going to be traveling soon, Tessa. Oh, what? Oh, Did you say in February? You <laughs> oh, in February. In February. I'm going to uh, Salt Lake City for Roots Tech, but um, no, I believe that the one person who's thinking of having a sabbatical actually is Linda McCauley. Oh, okay, and Linda. She's, she's already been traveling a lot already this year, but I don't think she's been doing research. I think she's been going to conferences and working. So we'll find out a little bit about that. But I, I loved the idea and I loved how you um, told us, you know, the families or the ideas that you were hoping to find in any of the places that you were at. And then that's yep. how I approached mine as well. I loved the guy who did time travel. And so I stole I, his idea. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I stole his idea because on a number of my people, I have to go back and find out where they were from so that yep. that trip to Ireland won't be wasted. But exactly. anyway, um, yep. that's a, a real good introduction to getting started. And we're going to go to Linda McCauley next because she might actually be oh able gosh. to take a sabbatical. <laughs> I'm not sure sabbatical is exactly the right word. If you're if you're retired, you can't really take a sabbatical, can you? <laughs> I'm going to take a sabbatical from some of the uh, uh, society work that I've spent most of this year on and get refocused on on my genealogy. How about that? <clears throat> I have made absolutely no plans for that. So it's just in my head that you know once. Uh, once the uh, FGS conference in February, and by the way, you mentioned Roots Tech. That's also the FGS conference as well. Right. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm uh, I'm actually the marketing chair for that conference. So, uh, I, I would take it as a personal favor if everybody that's going would go to FGS and and register. <laughs> for the conference, but uh, it doesn't matter which place you go, you can register in both places for both conferences. Uh, anyway, uh, once that's over, then I really intend to get refocused on my genealogy, and that's going to, uh, I'm not even sure what shape that's going to take, but I think it's going to take the shape of traveling a lot, mostly in the south. All right, and where, for instance, in the south would you be going? Well, I'm in Kentucky to start with, so... Uh, Probably I would start in Alabama with what I most want to work on and move to Georgia from there and uh, after that probably North Carolina and Virginia and uh, work my way back around into probably Tennessee and then there's still plenty I could do in Kentucky but I like to you know, ignore the courthouse that's a mile from my house where I've, in a county that I've had ancestors for over 200 years and go somewhere else to research. But Now, would you be staying in the United States? Yes. I'm not near ready to do anything and, else. And would you, even in your dream trip? Even in your dream sabbatical? I don't know. I, would, I actually don't know where I would go if I left the States. I'm seriously colonial with a Okay. Ancestry. Identify. Mm hmm Are we still here? I, everything froze up to me, and I wasn't sure if it was me that yeah, froze. Yeah, it froze for just a second, but I think it was, hopefully okay. that's right. I, I actually have not identified a single immigrant ancestor who arrived here after the Revolutionary War. <laughs> We are complete opposites. Yeah. <laughs> because so I think I'm this is the same see why I have no reason to leave the country, really. Uh, but this is a big even country. in my dreams. So, huh? This is a big country. So getting to all it, of this, it is. And, doing the uh, research. So, 
Uh, definitely, I have no immigrant ancestors who arrived here after the Civil War. That's wow. that's an absolute fact. There are some holes between there and the Revolution that haven't been plugged yet. That there could surely be an immigrant or two. Yeah, really, leaving country is uh, is way down my list of uh, dream places to to go for research at this point. Okay. Um, and what would you be taking with you while you're traveling and, and what types of things are you looking for as you are going through all the southern states? Taking with me? Probably just electronics and, and enough clothes to get by on. <laughs> you know, a laptop, a tablet, a camera <laughs> or two. Mm -hmm. um, all those kinds of things for phone. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea to have a, um, I don't know what they called them with the military, but, uh, you know, a butler or something like that, somebody who is uh, <laughs> doing all the cleaning for you and making the travel arrangements. I think. Yeah, well, I thought we, didn't have, we already didn't have to worry about that. With, with well, we the, didn't have to worry about that, but I want to make sure there's somebody there in all of those <laughs> places that I go to that's taking care of the, the hard work for me. So, okay, um, let's go ahead and go to Julie Goucher. We're going to introduce the British uh, to us for their research, and then I know I know Julie personally, so I know she's sooner or later going to have to go to uh, Sicily. I am. Well, uh, my, my my dad is from Sicily, so for me, um, it will be almost like going home. Um, and I think it's really important almost to just go back and just see where they came from. Although my dad was a you know, a recent immigrant in, into England in relative terms to us researching. I think it's really important that you go back and you get to experience the culture um, because I think being a, Italian or even half Italian is, is more than just a half of something else. It's a whole different concept to being a culture. Um, but I also have family connections that go back to India. I've got several lines which go back into the East India Company and I really would like to just go and explore um, I have an ancestor who had a road name after him, so it would be really lovely to wander down Balassi's Road and just see what it's like, how it got its name. Um, I've also got quite a lot of lines that went to Australia. Um, one was a, who was in the East India Company, who went to um, New South Wales as a convict. He was employed in the East India Company, um, killed somebody in a duel, defending his sister-in-law's honour. Um, and ended up being transported. Um, but again, it was a case of who you know, and he managed to get out of get out of jail card effectively, and only served about three years in India, uh, in Australia, and then came back to England, and then eventually returned back to India, minus his wife who had died in England, where he and he went back to India, resumed his previous um, post, and married his sister-in-law. Um, and I'd love to go back and, and just, oh, I know, very clicky. Um, I would love to go in just to explore a bit more around that. Um, but as I've delved deeper into my Surrey ancestors, I've got family members who went to Australia quite early on. So even into the 1820s, um, I don't actually have any convicts that went to Australia on my particular line, but I do have some that went as free settlers. Um, and I'd like to delve a little bit deeper um, into that. I would also like to go to um, Sierra Leone um, and follow the path that my grandfather would have taken when he was stationed in the army in the Second World War. And he spent two and a half years in Sierra Leone and then came back to England and then went across to Europe and went through France, Germany, Holland, the Netherlands. Um, and I've got various bits of memorabilia and things that he brought back. And I really would love to be in a position where I could walk perhaps the path that he walked. Um, I think there is just something incredibly connecting about being able to do that. Um, and that is pretty much it for my side. For my husband's line, he has a, a great grandmother who left Yorkshire and her husband and children and went to the States where she lived with her, the person who was to become her second husband. But they'd been in America for quite a few years before they married. And they married in New York, in fact. Mm -hmm. But they weren't living in New York. 
Um, and in fact, I did eventually track down their divorce papers, which are in the National Archives. Um, and I found, as I delved deeper through passenger records, we see her getting on the boat in Liverpool as one person with the baby and getting off the boat with her new name, um, but with the same baby. And it was almost like she got off, it was a new life. She drew a line in the sand and she just moved on. Um, and I think that is just... That was something to do that I think in this day and age, you know, it's not unusual for people to have second marriages, third marriages, maybe a fourth marriage. But to leave your children and start again in 1905 would have been quite, quite something. Hmm. Um, and I think that took an amazing amount of courage to do that um, because it was a very different world. So mm -hmm. I, I would like to go and explore where they lived. Um, where they had a did business. They stay in, did they stay in New York? You said they got married there. Um, or where did they go to? Um, they actually lived in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, and they had, um, their son had an export business, a fruit and veg, and I actually have a pencil which came down through the business, which I know sounds very strange. Um, and I, don't, I think I was even married. My father-in-law gave me this pencil and said to me that his grandmother had um, run off with a man and this was where the business was and I just had it on my desk for about I don't know 10 years and I thought I've got to do something with that um, and I started looking at it and I found some pictures of the general road um, but I would like to do a bit more digging um, but I have managed to track them down on the various passenger lists, the census. They actually came back to England quite a lot actually I was quite surprised it wasn't a case of I'm going to America and I'm starting a new life it was I'm going to America and I'm going to come home every year and a half and then she did that right up until she was in her early 70s Wow. which, which again is quite something I think we think of these little old ladies who didn't go anywhere and I think she was an incredible lady and I really wish I could just have met her and had a conversation with her um, so some of your dream sabbatical time should actually be to time travel as well. You should try and get back to uh, to meet this person. She sounds yeah. pretty uh, interesting and uh, ahead of her time. Yeah, definitely. I think she was. Um, Stuart had never seen a picture of her. Um, we I connected with somebody. Someone had read, uh, read a blog post that I'd written um, and somebody wrote to me and he sent me some documents um, which plugged the gaps that I had and also supported what I already had um, and that was and then said to me would you like to see a picture and I was so excited and I kept thinking where is he in the States because obviously the time difference and I was up about two or three in the morning checking my inbox because I was desperate to see this picture of her and there was this picture finally arrived um, and I showed my husband and I said look and he went I can't see any resemblance at all and it was like really you must be able to see the resemblance. And he couldn't see anything. And I just, it's, you know, I'm more interested in his family than he is, obviously. But it was, um, I think it's a great, but I did read the blog post when it first came out a few weeks ago. And I just thought, what a fabulous idea. I wish I thought of it. Um, but what, a brilliant, <laughs> what a brilliant idea. Um, and thought maybe I'd think about doing something along that line to my A to Z challenge in April. But that's a few months away yet. Oh, that's um, clever. Yeah. If I, if I don't run out of alphabet. <laughs> so you have Australia, India, um, Surrey, which is a part of England, right? Yeah. Sierra Leone, you're going to be coming to the States, you'll be in New York and Pennsylvania. Is there any other place that you would be doing research for either side of the family? Um, Nothing specific. I've got obviously my one name study and there are probably more Orlandos in the States than there are in Italy now. So I kind of will gather wherever I find them. I'm almost frightened to open my email package and, and see a message from Ancestry telling me they've released another set of documents because it's another four or five thousand people to extract and it's like I can't bear it. Um, and I just make a little note and it's just because there are just so many of them. Mm -hmm. um, it just it, it's difficult, but it's a great thing to be able to research it from you know not even leaving my study. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've, I've got quite a lot that I want to do. I really want to. 
I literally want to go and spend some time doing this in Australia because pretty much every state I've got some family connection to, um, which I would really love to be. I I lived there for a year, 20 years ago, and of course you don't. You when you have all the time in the world, so you travel before you start your career because it's sensible and before you get a mortgage and that kind of stuff. And of course it was before I realised, I'd always been interested in my research, but I hadn't made all the connections. Mm -hmm. And now I look back at it and it's like I wasted an entire year and it's, I didn't, but of course it's just a different perspective on it. Um, you know, I was within 10 hours of it, now I'm within two days of it perhaps. So it's just about perspective, but I would love to go and, and do that. It's on my retirement bucket. <laughs> okay, now I think we are ready for Carol, and you better at some point leave the United States. I can't believe that Linda McCauley's people have been here that long. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Uh, first, I'll say that I've been blessed and lucky to be able to do this on and off for the last 10 or more years, so I've already been traveling and going and doing just what we're talking about. That said, I wouldn't go mind going back to England again, um, up in Devonshire, up in Little Lashbrook, and do another whole round of that. Um, I also did not get into the correct archives building when I was there, so that's still on my bucket list. In the United States, I would like to find um, there's a path that was so well worn from the people that moved from Pennsylvania into Rockingham County and Shenandoah Valley. Um, I'd like to go up in the mountains and find that path. Um, in New York, I'd like to go back up to um, Lake Placid because, as like Julie said, when I was there, um, I didn't know that my husband's family was there, and that leads back to my Archie Lashbrook who. Um, I'm addicted to that research, so I'd like to go back and revisit that. There's also in my own research um, a bride who married, a southern bride who married a northern boy and ended up in um, a mental institution in New York. And died. I've got parts and bits of the story, and I would love to go back and get all of that. Um, and then I would like to go up into Canada because my husband's lines are up in Perth County and Waterloo County, um, Ontario. And I know that there's loads and loads and loads of stuff up there that I can't, I have not been able to access from down here. Although there's lots of great Ontario stuff online, I think I might be able to find some church records and some other things. And there's nothing like being where they lived. When we went to England, um, we were able to get into two or three of the churches and at least one of them still had no power, had no electricity. They had um, kerosene heaters. It had the baptismal font from the Norman era. So it was like 12, 13, 1400 and it was still in that church where um, we had baptisms in 1810, you know, marriages, about that time frame. So to walk into those churches where we knew they had been baptized back around 1800, um, it, take, it does take your breath away. Um, I'd like to go back to Germany and get back into Karlsruhe area. Um, there was a church there that we can trace back to almost 1685. And unfortunately, when we got there, the whole town was basically closed up. They rolled the streets up, and the only place you could find a person living was in the bar. And so we did not get into the church. Um, it was all locked up, and it was too late in the day to try to find anybody. And I'd like to go back and get into that church. I bet that's a beauty, because the date on the over the arch of over the door is 1735. So I would like to get back to there, and I wouldn't mind going back to Kauai either because we have some um, research that we did there, and that was pretty neat. That's a German line that came over to Hawaii, oh. and entered, spent a few years there, ended up in 
uh, the San Francisco Oakland area during the 1906 earthquake ended up in Michigan I would those might be a time travel I'd like to know why they went for sure I suspect I know but I'd like to know why they went from San Francisco up to the thumb of Michigan and I think it was a sister that was there but oh. I'd love to talk to them. And of course, it's if time travel, the weather. <laughs> no. <laughs> if we're going to time travel, I want Archie and I want to string him up and I want to talk to that dude for about a month because he's a character and I want to know all the stuff he was doing. Because every time I put him in a search engine, he comes up again for something new. <laughs> and I've been researching him from since 1991. Well, see, and that's so great really that you're getting, you know, hits or results. I think the, the <laughs> thing that's so tough is when, you know, I have some information about, you know, it's always so much easier to find the male side. You know, they either have property, they voted, um, you know, they worked, you know, any of these things. You know, it's been a real pain trying to find some of the information on the women in the family, certainly up in Newfoundland. And so that's one of those things that I thought, oh, I'm time traveling because I want to go back and talk to these people and say, you know, where exactly are you from in Ireland and when did you get over here and who are your parents? Because right now you're just your name and I know that you were married and had children, but we know so little else. So that's kind of interesting. But, but you have a person who's actually um, infamous or famous in, in Archie. Is that well, true? Yeah, he's <laughs> infamous to me. <laughs> He, um, he had a wife and a child and disappeared one day when he went to get a gallon of ice cream. And several years later, um, he marries my husband's grandmother and they have three sons and then we have children and grandchildren, great grandchildren. Um, but what's interesting is I was looking for a marriage for one of his sons who happened to be named the same thing after Archie changed his name because he didn't, once he ran away, he didn't stay Archie. He became Arthur Stevens. And um, when he became Arthur Stevens, apparently he married another woman in between. <laughs> so I'm looking for his son's marriages and a search engine, and up pops the marriage for the, the old man. And I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. And of course, now I can't find a divorce. So the I was going to say you're finding um, marriages, but you're not finding divorces. So you might have a bigamist no, in, the, in the tree. Oh, he is a bigamist. He is a bigamist. There is no doubt he's a bigamist because the first wife he never divorced. He just okay. walked away from Minneapolis, where he lived on Stevens Street. Oh, uh, uh huh. And um, showed up in Michigan. And no, he never divorced the first one. He is a bigamist. Given hmm. we. We understand that, yes, <laughs> and that's why I'm so addicted to his research because he's rich with goodies. Well, those are great stories, and it and you definitely have. Um, you're going to be traveling in uh, England, Germany, Canada. Then you're going to be in parts of the United States. And when you say the Shenandoah, um, you're talking about going from Pennsylvania to Virginia, then, right, or West mm -hmm. Virginia? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then New York, Hawaii, uh, I should have put that in just as, you know, a, a two-week break on this dream trip just to get a little mm -hmm. sun, right? San Francisco yeah. and Michigan, so definitely um, a lot of fun places and a lot to get in in a 12-month in a uh, sabbatical. Uh, we you have can do Paul, it. Done it. When we, when we travel, uh, you do it in do real it. life. Do you, all, you all have a, what yeah, do you call do. them, um, um, what's it called, you have a, it's not a mobile home. What's it? Uh, RV. Um, what's the phrase for it? An RV. Okay. Um, if you can tell that yeah. I don't have that experience, but um, so you you guys are actually able to travel a lot and mm -hmm. and drive and go to these places. It's not like a flyover. Yeah. So that and, no. and then you can kind of change oh. your plans if you find something because you have your yeah. house with you, so to speak, um, or at least and your, your house. Yeah, and and you can take advantage of when your house breaks down in this strange little town, wonderful little town in Oregon, and you go to your database and you put that name in and you look for it as a place, you realize that there's about eight people that live there for maybe 50 years and they're all buried there. And you do not have their obituaries and their library has the local newspapers. So you can, if you have your database with you and your information and your toys, even when something wrong happens, something bad happens, and you're broke down, 
you can actually fall back to research and go find five obituaries that you would have never had. And that's great, and that's a perfect that's, reminder that you're taking your legacy database yeah. with you. <laughs> so we're going to tie it into mm -hmm. our Always. monthly hangout in that in that regard. That's great. And Always. if you are traveling between states, you could also say, "I wonder if we have anybody in you know Missouri or wherever else." All right, now we're going to go over to fun. to Paul Featherston. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. I know you, but I don't ever use your last name. Sorry. <laughs> Is it Featherstone or fe Yes, it's Featherstone. Can you hear me? I can Hello. hear you. Just a little bit louder would be great. The Hang on a minute. Stick it there. Is that better? Uh, grand. All right. Perfect. Um, I'm sure I don't pronounce your last name right because I don't get any of the Shires right either. But is it Featherstone? Yeah. <laughs> They're both laughing. It's not Shire, right? <laughs> sure, <Okay>. sure. <laughs> All right, Paul. Where are you going to go on this sabbatical? Where uh, money's no I, object I, and places are no object. Ireland for about a year, I think. <laughs> All 12 months in Ireland? I think yeah. that's a great idea, but is that where all your people are from? Well, I just need to find out where the, how they got there. There's a rumour that a, a Featherstone went across to Ireland after the Civil War. That's our Civil War, not your Civil War. I was going to ask you, you're going to have to tell us the years on this because it's a different Civil War. <laughs> 1650, I think it is. <laughs> okay. Um, it was Cuthbert's. We know it's Cuthbert's. But where he came from, we don't know. And Cuthbert's fairly common Featherstone name in the 1600s. I've got at least five. Okay. <laughs> and what part of Ireland are you talking about? Are you in the north of Ireland? No. Um, oh, okay. Wexford, Dublin. Uh, what's the one at the bottom? Cork. Well, you have. Um, okay. I was going to say, and close close to um, Wexford is Carlow because that's where a number of our ancestors are from. Mm. Oh, yes. Just a step over from Wexford. And I'd also like to go back uh, to the time of the, um, the Doomsday Book and find out where Featherstone in Staffordshire comes from. And for those of us who are unfamiliar with the Doomsday Book, could you tell us what that is? It's um, it's a it was done by or it was ordered by William the Conqueror, right? to find out what his new kingdom was worth. So everybody with anything from a pig to a hen was named in it. Okay. And Featherstone in Staffordshire. There's three Featherstones. There's one in Staffordshire, there's one in uh, West Yorkshire, and there's one in Northumberland. And they, were all, they all existed at the same time, but I found the link between West Yorkshire and Northumberland, but I haven't proved the link in Staffordshire yet. So that would be interesting. I do a one name study, by the way, for the ones that don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You and Julie both are doing one name studies. I, I have one as well. Okay. And I don't know if anyone in the group has a one place study where you're you're studying a particular location. I know Julie has Satara and I think two other places, right? A street and something else. But um, you're, Paul, you're doing a one name study, right? Okay. So you're so, you're yeah. basically going to stick with Ireland and parts of England. And, okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so you don't have people who went anywhere else? There's more Featherstones in the States than there are in England. <laughs> okay. Australia. There's a few in South Africa, lots in New Zealand, uh, and Canada. I'm just trying to put a database of Canada together at the moment, and it's driving at the wall because they just keep changing the names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you were taking this dream sabbatical for a year, um, I find it interesting that you spend all your time close to where you already are, as yeah, opposed that's to. True. Uh... That's true. <laughs> I spent the we want you to be a little bit adventuresome and come over to the United States for a little part of it. Mm, maybe. maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you're going to, even I've got in your a lot dreams. Of information from the United States already. 
It's just a matter mm. of putting it in. Okay. 21 booklets produced by a Featherstone, that's without the A, that she gave me back in 90, who, 99, I think it was. That's 1999 or 1899. And, um, <laughs> and I need to go through those. When I, when I get finished with Canada, that's probably what I will do next. All right. That sounds like a plan. All right, I'm going to go back to Jennifer for a moment. I want to know what kind of response you got. Uh, I read a few of the posts. I Like I said, I love the guy who time traveled because then that got, you know, gave me all kinds of ideas. Um, but what kind of response have you received from other people about your uh, post? Well, the biggest, the biggest response was really from you. I haven't had a big response to it, really. Um, I think a lot of people have said they like the idea, which is really neat because I, you know, I just was having fun dreaming. Um, but I have not heard from a lot of people. So um, maybe people are putting it on the back burner, you know, as a dream, someday I'll do this um, kind of a thing. But I was taking notes while everyone was talking, and I wanted to say a couple of things. Um, let's see, Julie, I love the idea of following in your grandfather's footsteps um, during his military service. That's such a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking my grandfather served in North Africa during um, World War II, and that would be a really neat thing to do. Um, I did get his, world, his military service record, but it, a lot of it is redacted. <laughs> I guess he did some secret stuff. I don't know what, though. Um, and then I was thinking about, I've been really involved in looking at, um, and I'll probably pronounce it wrong too, but Ballymoney, which is in um, northern, it's in Ulster, um, northern Ireland, county of Antrim. And I was thinking the thing I would love to do is rent a cottage on the coast where I could look out towards Scotland and wonder where those ancestors came from, if they came from Scotland, if they came from England. Um, I really think one of the things that Julie said about walking in your ancestors' footsteps is what made me start to think about really doing this was, and I know all of you can relate, you research your ancestors and they're real to you. It's like they're sitting next to you in the chair and the thought of being able to walk where they walked or as I think Carol said, stand in the places where they, this, their spiritual houses. Um, such a neat thing to be able to do or, or just walk down the street and have coffee in a shop in a building that might have existed at the time that they did um, would be so neat to be able to do um, let's see oh Paul is so lucky to be able to, to be deeply colonial Paul I don't know you're so lucky um, and I love that Carol would like to talk to her relatives and I think that would be a whole nother blog post which relatives do you really want to talk to because I have one named Alvin I would really like to talk to because he was dropped from a spaceship. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, Carol, Carol, did you say you, were you talking about Rockingham County in New Hampshire? No, that would be Rockingham County, Virginia. The oh, Virginia, Valley, okay. Because yeah. I live Shenandoah in Rockingham County. County. Rockingham County. Yeah. I, I don't know Virginia, but I live in Rockingham County, New Hampshire, so I... I oh. um, I heard that, but anyway, so so let's see. So my your initial question, I talked more, but I have not had a lot of feedback on and it. And I think one of those things, because I did something, I want to say about a year ago, that was the genealogy pie, you know, how I spend my time, and then saying, you know, you kind of have to rethink yeah. it every so often and, and switch it up or whatever. And... Um, Randy Seaver had commented on it and he made it one of his you know Saturday night genealogy fun uh, missions or whatever and he got really into it and divided the time I think he was an engineer in his previous life so he had it down to the moment you know I mean he he divided it up by minutes not hours or whatever and I think that that was overwhelming to a lot of people and then not very many people did it either and he was kind of surprised but I had made the suggestion that I thought this would be a great um, icebreaker for people at a conference mm. or a seminar that you're doing or like I said a monthly hangout that we have here just to kind of hear areas that people need to do research in or, or you know 
I guess the other thing is how adventuresome they would be. You know, where would they go and how would they, you know, plan their trip and all of that. So I definitely think it's one of those things that we can follow up on because I think once you start thinking that way, you know, I sat down to write mine up kind of like you did and I was thinking, okay, what order would I need to go in because otherwise, you know, am I, am I, contacting the people that I need to get information from at first. Am I going to those places and doing it in the right order or will I get back to Ireland and still not right. have the information I need? Yep. So for my part, I would the, the first month I was going to spend in Salt Lake City because I was going to get all the consultants there to do work for me, <laughs> to answer <laughs> questions and translate documents that I have and make sure that I had all that in order and get maps and, and all of the rest of it that I would need and then start out in Newfoundland. But I would have to start out with some time travel and I'd have to pick a, a number of different years because I think that it is the situation of just it was an outpost community of about 200 and probably at the highest point, maybe um, 350 people, um, and, and a lot of those small communities. But we don't have photographs, and we don't have um, anything really written up. And, and the thing that I was able to do when I was there was go to a church that one of my relatives helped build. I was able to, you know, as Carol said, you go where they were baptized, or you're standing in that church and thinking, you know, oh, they would have come here for Mass. And you know, I did find the um, the tombstones and the gravestones and, and all of that. And, and then you're, for me, it was finding people that had the same last name, which is very uncommon, but there is very common. And so then you're meeting up with those people or asking questions. It's still hard to find the information about the women because they would have moved out of the communities that they were raised in. So, you know, for my part, it was, it was going to be probably spending two months up there. One time, one month time travel, one one month in the current time so that I could check all of those um, things that they told me about. Um, and then also going to New York and um, going to Nebraska because that's where the, the other group of Irish came in. Uh, they came to New York first and then they moved on immediately, you know, or within about five years uh, to get farmland and, and ended up in Nebraska. And so that's another place that I would need to go to. And, you know, you're in this country, but I have to say that my chances of getting to the center of the country, so to speak, are slim to none. I'm usually on either side, uh, but definitely making that trip. Uh, then we have uh, the people who went to Minnesota, and they would have gone from Norway and from Sweden, and those records are wonderful. So I have a lot of those records, but the problem being we know what happened with the people who came to Minnesota, but we don't know too much of what happened with the people who stayed there. And it would be interesting to go back there and find the extended family and also time travel so you could find out, I mean, I know why they left because things would be better here. Um, but but what their life was like there, you know, kind of thing would be interesting. And then the final group would be... Um, Slovenia, it would be Austria, and then depending on the time frame, it's um, Yugoslavia, Slovenia, whatever they want to call it, but they're all within, you know, it's, it's the same five-mile stretch, but it goes to the various countries as a result of World War I, World War II, and anything else on the Cold War. Um, but we don't have, that's the side of the family we have the least information about because they know where they were from there, but I don't think they stayed in much contact at all. And so I'm, I would guess half of my travel would be foreign, uh, which I think would be great. And then the other parts would be going to parts of the country that I've never gone to do research in uh, before. I have the luxury of having the Washington, D.C. area in Northern Virginia, and then being out in the area that my family ended up settling. All of those various groups came together, so to speak, in Washington. And so, you know, I can get up there and do research, but it's it's finding all of the old information, which is my problem. So, so I thought this was a terrific idea. You know, kudos to you for that. And I Thank think it's you. one of those kinds of things that you just think about. And certainly, when that when that guy mentioned that you know we could go back and talk to these people, I think that you know, as Julie said and as Carol said, that whole idea of being where they were, being on their land 
in mm -hmm. a home they built, um, you know, on the farm that they homesteaded. It's great to see those documents at NARA, but it's amazing to go to the actual property um, and think somebody was here for our purposes. You know, we're thinking 1800s, maybe 1700s. A number of you that can carry it way far back <laughs> to, um, you know, William the Conqueror have a little bit more history. We're a little bit newer than that. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn this over for just a little bit to Linda um, because I want you to tell us a little bit more since you're doing some of the marketing for them about the FGS Roots Tech Connection because I'm trying to figure out in my head how that's all going to come together. <laughs> a lot of people do have questions about that I think. Um, this is a one-time special event that was decided a, a couple of years ago I guess uh, with an agreement between the Federation of Genealogical Societies and Roots Tech to combine their annual conferences uh, for one time uh, in 2015. That means that the FGS conference that's usually in late August, early September is going to be in February uh, in 2015. So we started registration right from uh, San Antonio from 2014 conference in, in late uh, August because we had six months to uh, to go uh, you know, to get ready for it. Uh, things are moving along. We're doing a lot of discussing between the, between the two conferences to get things worked out. But we'll have some shared activities and events and we'll, and sessions, and we'll have separate. A completely separate program as well. So it's basically going to be two conferences in one building in the Salt Palace uh, Convention Center there in Salt Lake that is just a block or two away, depending on which door you come out from uh, from the Family History Library. So all the, the main hotels, the conference center, and the library are all right there within walking distance of each other. Um, we'll have, uh, if you're familiar with watching, uh, some of the past Roots Tech conferences, they always have the morning keynote. Those will be shared sessions, so all the FGS attendees and Roots Tech attendees both will be uh, be in those. And then we break out for the rest of the day into separate sets of sec of uh, sessions. FGS has their tracks, Roots Tech has theirs. Uh, the expo hall is shared, so uh, everybody is has access to the ex expo hall, and it will be. Uh, bigger, probably the biggest one that that we've seen at a, at a genealogy conference in this country. Um, the evening events, uh, FGS has an evening social on uh, Wednesday to kick things off, and then all the other events are shared events, but uh, f in the evenings. Uh, there's some announcements coming soon about who those keynote speakers and, and evening event uh, speakers or entertainers or whatever they might be will uh, will be uh, so stay tuned for all that you can go to fgsconference.org to register or find and find out more information uh, about the conference and there's also links there to all the fgs social media accounts so we've got you know a couple of blog posts a week uh, about uh, and, and updates noticed, and things that are going on right and what i noticed was whether you sign up through Roots Tech or FGS, there's kind of an add-on ticket, so to speak. So you have your registration for what you're going to, and then you can add on for a really small amount right. uh, the, the other the conference. So if you wanted to go to some Roots Tech things, if you were signed up through FGS, you can do that. You can go to anything you want, basically. And there's going to be, I mean, I don't mean this in a bad way, but they'll be competing. You'll be having um, a speaker speaking at the FGS as well as a speaker or many more speakers at Roots Tech. There will be a lot to choose from, so to speak. Yes, bo both of us have, have uh, you know, the tracks of, of sessions every day. I'm not sure off the top of my head how many tracks that is, but it's more than a normal conference, obvi obviously, because it's two conferences at the same time. But, uh, but yes, you can register. If you register through the FGS site, you can add on. The pricing is the same, by the way. It's no financial mm -hmm. advantage to go to one or the other. So we, we both have the same process for everything. Uh, right now, the current price for the full registration is $159. And you can add on Roots Tech through the FGS site for $39. It works the same way, obviously, the other way. But um, 
but you can do that all through fgsconference.org. And there's a number of people, I know that um, there's a number of Australians coming, there's people from England uh, coming, you know, from the UK, uh, people come from all over the United States. It, it really gets, you know, for, for two reasons probably, it really gets a lot of people. Number one, FGS do, just does great conferences, has really good speakers in all of the time, and I would say from anything I've seen of theirs, it would be intermediate to advanced is what I, I would probably call it. Most people who are going to an FGS conference have some skills down, right? Whereas I think... Uh, maybe, but we have, we have sessions that are that, uh, are, are, that would be great for beginners as well. I mean, there's the, 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 if you look at our program on the conference website, is there, okay. each session is labeled with a little B, I, or A as to what level it's for, so you can tell that uh, and sort and you of also judge have a for yourself. Day, right? FGS we has do a have a Librarian's Day. That's a, a sort of a separate thing. It's a separate registration. Right. Uh, but Librarian's Day is uh, is actually uh, $10, I believe, is, is all. It's, that, that is sponsored by ProQuest. Okay. So there's so uh, that's on that's on Tuesday the February the 10th the main conference for FGS starts February the 11th and runs through the 14th. So it's Wednesday through Friday or okay. Wednesday through Saturday just like always. Okay, and I know that Roots Tech, in the past at least, has had a number of comments that that many of their so, um, sessions are beginner to intermediate as opposed to advanced. It's a, a much smaller group of um, the high tech kind of thing. Um, but there's going to be a really good mix. Uh, I will also say that uh, um, I know I'm presenting at Roots Tech for the first time, so that's a little bit nerve wracking. Um, but on um, One Name Studies, and so there are specialty items as well, whether somebody's speaking about DNA, you know, a number of these things are, are standard genealogy, but then some of them are particular types of studies, so there are a tremendous number of offerings, and it's in a terrific place. I've been to the um, Family History Library three times, I think, and you could easily spend the week they're just doing your research as well. So um, probably the thing to do is to get a lot of sleep beforehand. Uh, <laughs> yes. Realize it's going to be a very busy week. There's going to be a lot of people around, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun combining the two. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to attend in 2015 was because it would be combining FGS with Roots Tech. I thought there'd be just a tremendous number of sessions as well as some really phenomenal speakers. So I think that's going to be great. Um, hopefully, uh, and anyone who's in the Legacy Virtual Users Group community, maybe we could all get together if you're going to be at Roots Tech slash FGS, um, uh, and anybody has Julie, a few maybe, minutes. Julie, maybe Julie, are you planning to be, to be there? Yes, I am. Julie is one of our FGS ambassadors. Uh, that is a, a group of, of bloggers and social media enthusiasts that are that are helping us spread the word about uh, about F FGS. And some of many of them are planning to attend, and some of them aren't. So if you're interested in that, by the way, you can uh, find the information about that at the fgsconference.org website as well. Well, I'm going to say that FGS should be very proud of you because you are an excellent marketing person. I think you filled us in on everything. Um, I am definitely <laughs> I'm not hoping. exactly sure what I said since that all rattled off the top of my head. I didn't well, realize you were going to do that. So. I think I I think it would be a great um, breaking the ice conversation to have with people and we might play with that because the guild is planning to attend the Guild of One Name Studies as well and I know Julie's going to be there and that a number of members of the Legacy Virtual Users Group are going to be there so I would you know we would love to play with this uh, sabbatical year as um, I think we should try and talk ancestry into giving away a prize of actually coming through with the sabbatical year um, that would be wonderful if somebody could actually live the dream, um, but chances of that. Yeah, my current plan is to is to arrive in Salt Lake several days early to try to have some time for uh, for research before the conference gets started. And that's a much better idea than staying after. I did that one year when I went to the Salt Lake Institute. I thought, oh, I'll stay two extra days. All you want to do is not research by that point. You're so exhausted you don't want to do it. It's better if you get your research done at the beginning. Um, then yeah, think I've done that at, at other conferences and before works better works better for me, but uh, 
I figure okay. I might be a little tired by the time it's over. So, <laughs> I think you might be as well. So in any event, um, we're coming up on the hour, or we're a little bit over. But Jennifer, again, it was a absolutely wonderful idea. I love it. Um, Thank hopefully you. we can play with it at Roots Tech even a little bit, um, you know, or that conference. Uh, I would love for everybody in the Legacy Virtual Users Group who is watching this live or watching the recording to uh, put a comment in. Tell us the place that you would want to go and we'll make sure that that gets back to Jennifer as well. I'd like to thank especially Julie Goucher and Paul Featherston for attending because I know the time difference is quite different. I think it's evening for you. And we had the summer off and we were all very busy with trips and conferences and work and what have you, but it's great to have Carol and Linda back again. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast.